follow us. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, leaders of our academic community, my lord, spiritual and temporal, great academic from all walks of life, great Putinians, great Putinians, great Putinians. Today, the 4th of April, 2017, is the day the Lord has chosen for the 25th inaugural lecture of our university with the title Functional Tools, Paradigm for Health and Wellness. And it will be delivered by the student professor of our university, Ganin Obo, Professor of Applied Biology. He is the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, I dare say brand new. Professor Olatunde Arayela, a round of applause for him, please. <laughs> Dr. Mrs. Modupe Olayinka Ajayi is the chief scribe of our institution. <laughs> the chancellor of our exchequer, that is the boss of our institution, Mr. Emmanuel Ademola Oreshegu is also here. A round of applause for him. <laughs> the custodian of the books of our institution. Dr. Bilau Olatunde Badamosha, a librarian, is also here. Our deans are also well represented. Professor Shedrak Olufemi Akindele is the Dean School of Agriculture and Agricultural Techno Technology. He is also the Chairman Committee of Deans of our institution. Professor Olubode Kolade Koriko is the host dean for today, the Dean School of Sciences the largest school in our institution. <laughs> Professor Michael Olanrewaju Alatishe is the Dean School of Engineering and Engineering Technology. <laughs> Professor Idowubolo Finde Odeyemi is the Dean School of Health and Mineral Sciences. Professor T.M. Obamuyi is the Dean School of Management Technology. <laughs> Professor Moses Oludare Ajewole is the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies. <laughs> Professor Ayo Adiabo is the Dean School of Health and Health Technology. <laughs> Why Professor Boniface Kayode Aleshe is the Dean Student Affairs. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'd like to bring forward the chairman of today's occasion, the vice chancellor of our great university, Professor Adebiyi Gregory Daramola, for his address. The deputy vice chancellor of academics, registrar and other principal officers, my law spiritual and temporal, top government functionaries, the inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Gani Obo, deans, directors, and heads of departments, distinguished members of council, members of senate, and members of congregation, eminent scholars and friends of the university, members of staff, Great Futerians, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm exceedingly happy to welcome you all to this 85th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Technology, Akure. I warmly welcome all, this, all our spiritual and traditional leaders present in our midst, top government functionaries here present, friends of the university, well wishers, for honoring our invitation to this event. I warmly welcome members of the family of the inaugural lecturer, friends, relatives, staff, students, and the entire members of the university community. I congratulate the inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Ganyu Obo, for reaching the pinnacle of his career and being able to deliver his inaugural lecture today. Henry David Toru, said, and I quote, success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. End of quote. Professor Ganyu Obo is a typical example of this saying. 
He will stand here today to give his inaugural lecture, though at the back of his mind, all the triumphs he has accomplished, the struggles he had faced, the battles he chose not to fight, will come playing back. But the inaugural lecture, being the mark of victory, will remind him and those coming behind that hard work and determination pays. The topic to be delivered today by Professor Obo, a professor of applied biochemistry, is functional foods, paradigm for health and wellness. Professor Ganyu Obo was born at Ibien Nafe in Edo State of Nigeria on the 28th of February, 1970. He had his primary education at St. Teresa's Demonstration Primary School here in Akure and attended Oyemekun Grammar School for his secondary education. Thereafter, he was admitted into this great study of learning, the Federal University of Technology, Akure, where he obtained his bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees in 1992, 1997, and 2002, respectively. On completion of participation in the National Youth Service at the Oyo State School of Science, where he taught chemistry, Professor Obo afterwards returned to his alma mater, Futa, for his master's degree. He taught chemistry briefly at the Joba Royal College and Sacred Heart Seminary, both in Akure, after successful completion of his master's degree program before joining the service of the Federal University of Technology, Akure, as a graduate assistant in 1997. By dint of hard work, he rose through the ranks to become a professor in 2012. Professor Obo is a researcher by excellence, and he won the Best Researcher of the Year Award in this university in 2009 and 2012. He has a broad international research experience at University of Triste, Triste, Italy, Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, where he is a regular associate as well as Institute of Food Chemistry, Technical University, Dresden, Germany, where he had his postdoctoral fellowship. He also has a research experience as a visiting scholar and fellow at the Institute of Nutritional Studies, Shanghai, Institute of Bio Biological Sciences. Chinese Academy of Sciences in China. Professor Obo is a scholar of international repute with several professional qualifications from institutes such as Abdul Salam Triste, among others. He teaches courses at the non-degree undergraduate and postgraduate levels and has supervised over 50 students at the master's level and a few dissertations. Professor Ganyu Obo has held several administrative positions, especially at the departmental level, at school level, including being the sub-dean of School of Postgraduate School from year 2010 to 2011. He has also served the university in various capacities as coordinator chemistry biochemistry department, SLT 2002 to 2005, member university ceremonials committee, Futa 2002 to 2006, representative of Congression in the Senate 2002 to 2006, member of Senate of the University as acting HOD Biochemistry 2011 to 2012, statutory member of Senate of the University as a full professor 2014 to date, amongst others. He also has several administrative positions at the Federal University of Oyekiti. Fouye during his sabbatical appointment in the university as the head of department, biochemistry department, member appointments and appraisal review committee, and chairman accreditation committee, faculty of science. Professor Obo has been a member of the National Universities Commission accreditation team for science on three different occasions. He has 284 publications in reputable national and international journals. Of both national and international repute. 
He has attended 28 seminars and conferences locally in Nigeria and over 25 internationally in different countries, including Cameroon, Kenya, Slovenia. Professor Obo has earned 21 deserving awards and scholarships over time, including, amongst others, Federal Government Scholarship Award for Postgraduate Studies, 1993 to 1994, Junior Associate Biophysics Award, Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics, Tristan Italy, 2000 to 2006, Third World Academy of Sciences, CMPQ, Postdoctoral Fellowship, University Federal do Santa Maria, Brazil, March to December 2005, and as Alexander von Humboldt's AVH Foundation of Postdoctoral Fellowship, Technique University Dresden, Germany, 2007 to 2008. Professor Obo has also attracted international and national research grants to the university. He is a member of several professional bodies at home and abroad. He is happily married and blessed with children. His hobbies, which I find very interesting, are singing, dancing, and sewing. So he's a tailor. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please join me as I invite to the podium our distinguished inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Ganyu Obo, a professor of applied world chemistry. the registrar, all the principal officers of the universities, deans and directors, professors and other members of Senate, head of department and unit, members of administrative and technical staff, my law, spiritual and temporal, other academic and professional colleagues, friends of the university, Colleagues in the fourth estate of the realm, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, great Futurians. As I deliver this inaugural lecture from the Department of Biochemistry, School of Sciences, I praise the name of the Lord, the creator of the universe, the maker of all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the giver of wisdom, knowledge and understanding, the almighty God, the King of kings, the Lord of laws, and the life provider. I feel highly honored, but yet deeply humbled for the opportunity given to me to present the 85th inaugural lecture of the Federal University of Technology at Kure. Mine is the third inaugural lecture from the Department of Biochemistry of this great university. This is coming almost 16 years after the first inaugural lecture delivered by our esteemed professor, Professor T.L. Olawoyi. The second lecture in the department was delivered by my ogre at the top, my supervisor and mentor, Professor A. Akidansi. By the grace of God, I am privileged to deliver the third inaugural lecture <laughs> from the Department of Biochemistry titled Functional Foods, Paradigm for Health and Awareness. Mr. Vice Chancellor, kindly permit me to start this lecture from a historical perspective. My foray into biochemistry as a course of study can be best described as a divine arrangement. As I did not quite understand the essence of this subject matter, until I gained admission into the Department of Biochemistry at Futa in 1987. Just like most biochemists and intended biochemists, my parents wanted me to study medicine. So I chose medicine and surgery as a first choice of study at the University of Joss and biochemistry second at Futa, 
However, my father asked me to change my second choice of study to pharmacy at the University of Lagos. That very year, I gained admission into three universities, University of Illinois to study zoology, University of Jaws to study zoology, and Futa to study biochemistry. On the day I was to resume at the University of Illinois to start my study in zoology, I was counseled by, my, by Professor F.A. Akinyosoye, then a lecturer at the University of Illinois, and my former biology teacher in the secondary school to take up Futa admission. Following that wise cancer, I moved my teams from the University of Illinois and took up the admission earlier offer to study biochemistry at Futa. <laughs> Again, my research in the area of functional food and nutraceuticals, with special focus on tropical foods, was fortitious. My first degree training was in enzymology. My second degree training was in natural product chemistry and medicinal plants. While my third degree training was in food biochemistry, all in FUTA. I can say without my sin words that I am the first pure strain FUTERIAN. Three degrees from FUTA to deliver an inaugural lecture. Other alumni of FUTA who are delivered inaugural lectures do not have all of their three degrees from FUTA. <laughs> My postdoctoral training in Brazil with Professor J.B.T. Rocha and Jamie with Professor Thomas Elling, as well as my training in Italy with Professor Sabina Passamonti and China with Professor Zunji Ko actually equipped me for this odious task of studying food in earth and in disease. Brief overview of biochemistry. Biochemistry is a unique and distinct subject that aims to explain the diverse form of life in chemical terms. It gained prominence during the first decade of the 19th century when scientists from medical sciences engaged in studying the chemistry of life. This was later renamed physiological chemistry. Around 1833, in order to distinguish it from ordinary chemistry. The term biochemistry was first coined in 1903 by Karl Newberg, the father of biochemistry. In the mid-90s, the presence of biochemistry in the scientific, scientific community increased in visibility as fit in medicine, microbiology, nutrition, and wartime efforts dictated the need to understand the underlying processes of life. Mr. Vesel every time we eat, we engage in some kind of biochemistry through the process of metabolism. Metabolism starts with food mastication in order to increase its surface area and thus enables enzyme action. Biochemistry is ubiquitous in nature, as it forms an integral part of discipline in the life sciences. It is important to understand that if you have an interest in any ology, it has through directly or indirectly in biochemistry. Since it will help answer the questions that are fundamental to life, there are many modern systemic diseases in which dietary pattern plays a significant role in the incidence and pathogenesis of such diseases. In this regard, the occurrence of metabolic syndrome, including the type 2 diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, cardiovascular disease, anemia, and others, is often related to lifestyle such as dietary pattern, smoking, and physical exercise. Therefore, proper nutrition and healthy lifestyle may be a good prerequisite for the prevention of most of this. This has formed the philosophy of my research activities. 
nutrient enrichment. Protein malnutrition is a major public health problem in the developing world. Diet in Nigeria are predominantly starchy. The major food crops being roots and tuba. From 24 to 88% of the daily calories of population in some part of Nigeria are derived from cassava alone. In Nigeria, cassava is traditionally processed into a wide range of products, but mainly into fermented flour and gari. The flour is actually made into hot water dough, fufu, and eaten with soup, depending on the family income. However, it may not sufficiently supplement the low protein content on content of fufu. Thus, there is a need for supplementation of relatively cheap plant food containing low protein through different methods. My PhD thesis focused on the nutrient enrichment of cassava product through microfungi solid substrate fermentation technology. This study revealed that the use of microfungi, such as rosopus orizae, for cassava fermentation increased the protein content of cassava flour to 8.7% and that of gari to 5.6%. As for nigga, fermentation increased the protein content of cassava flour to 12.2% and that of gari to 7.3%. Saccharomyces cerevisiae fermentation increased the protected content of cassava flour to 10.9% and that of gari to 6.3%. Conversely, this technology decreased the antinutrient, cyanide, tannin, and phytic content of the products. A lot of questions have been raised with regard to the safety of microfungi fermented cassava product for human consumption. This prompted us to evaluate the nutritional quality and safety of Saccharomyces cerevisiae fermented cassava flour. Dietary inclusion of the flour in rice diet for 21 days did not cause a significant alteration in the hematological parameters. But there was a significant rise in the serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase and glutamate oxaloacetate transaminate activities, indicating possible damage to the liver. However, raised serious alarm about the safety of these products. The medicine in food. Food has always been an integral part of human life. And without doubt, all food are functional because they provide nutritive benefits. Coupled with the state, taste, and aroma they offer. However, over the past years, the term functional in relation to food has come to have a new dimension. Functional foods refers to food or food component that confer additional health benefit to the consumers beyond their conventional nutritive values. Even though functional food research seems to be an emerging field, there are evidence to support that interest in our food can promote health and prevent diseases has been preserved over the centuries, especially in ancient India and Chinese traditional medicine. An ancient philosopher, Apocrites, said, let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And this statement reveals the age-long human belief in the relationship between diet and early living. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sir, it is no longer a secret that the whole world is facing the global epidemics of diabetes. Type 2, diabet type, type two diabetes, obesity, and other diet-related diseases. To address this public health crisis, there is an urgent need to explore innovative strategies for promoting healthy eating. There are among evidence that global increase 
in the consumption of heavily processed food coupled with lifestyle changes. Particularly, cultural shift away from fresh and wholesome homemade meals to take out have contributed to high rates of preventable chronic disease. With this in mind, my research group has chosen to undertake the odious task of investigating some common staples in Nigeria. This avis their nutritive value and medicinal potentials. And the effect of food processing techniques on them. I will from here on share some of the insight we have gained over the years in this regard. Dietary antioxidant. Many human Degenerative diseases have been recognized to be the to be consequence of free radical damage. Free radicals are highly reactive chemical substances, including superoxide, hydroxy radical, and siglet oxygen, that can travel around the body and cause damage to the body cell. Free radicals naturally occur in the body as a result of chemical reaction. During normal cellular process, including digestion of food and signal transduction, they can also be formed in response to environmental factors such as excess pollution, excessive UV rays, exposure to cigarette smoke, automobile exhaust, and pesticide, not getting enough rest or sleep, not managing our stress responses not eating healthfully can also cause free radical damage. The human body is equipped with antioxidant defense system that deactivates these highly reactive free radicals. Antioxidant enzymes made in the body and nutrients found in foods soak up all the excess energy that these free radicals have, turning them into harmless particles or waste product that we can get rid of. Some of the earliest work I engaged in in my postdoc were studies relating to the antioxidant activity of various food materials or farm produce, particularly green leaf vegetables, vegetable fruits, spices, legumes, and fruit. To date, I still revisit such studies as it is essential and informative to know what contribution the food we eat have to do have to our own well-being. Mr. Vice Chancellor, permit me to highlight from my research the antioxidant property of some Nigerian foods and the effect that some commonly practiced processing techniques have on them. Green leaf vegetables. Reports from our laboratory research reveal that tropical green leafy vegetables such as pumpkin leaf, amaranthus, jute leaf, sweet basil, water leaf, Jerusalem leaf, bitter leaf are rich in phytochemicals that could exert interesting antioxidant activities. Our result also revealed that Swiss basin, known as ephyrin, had the highest antioxidant properties, while water leaf, bure, had the least. In Nigeria, green leaf vegetables are not usually consumed in their fresh form. They are usually processed before consumption. Our study revealed that blanching reduced antioxidant properties of most of the vegetables studied, while steam cooking and sun drying increased their antioxidant status. Fruits. Fruit have been identified as nutritious, naturally, naturally occurring food. Therefore, we rank some commonly consumed fruits based on their antioxidant properties. Our results reveal that 
African star apple, known as Agbaluma, is the best. Legumes. Legumes are popularly consumed as a source of dietary protein. Our studies reveal that legumes have low antioxidant properties, except African yam bean, brown cow pea, brown pigeon pea. However, fermentation of legumes such as African yam beans, African locust bean, soya bean, barbara granite, and melon seed to produce condiments increase their antioxidant properties. Ceres. In recent years, ceres and their components have been applied to fun in functional food and nutraceuticals. Our investigation on ceres growers, maize and sorghum, revealed that they displayed antioxidant activity with white maize grower having the highest antioxidant potential. However, roasting of maize significantly reduced their antioxidant properties. Pepper fruit. Peppers generally add high antioxidant properties. However, the process of ripening enhanced their antioxidant properties. Obo and Roche 2008 reported that removal of seed from pepper amounted to about 50% loss in the total phenol content and consequently reduced the antioxidant activity. In another study, Obo 2011 showed that the combination of hot pepper, sweet pepper, and abenaro exhibited additive antioxidant properties, tomatoes. The most abundant carotenoid in tomatoes is lycopene. It has gained a lot of interest in functional food research in recent time due to its strong antioxidant properties and linkage to reduced risk of cancer and some age-related diseases. Research results from our laboratory revealed that tomatoes and the substitute, that is snake tomato, exhibited high antioxidant activities. Spices. Spices are well known for their medicinal properties, and their use in the inner healing system has been previously documented. Findings from my research group reveal that some Nigerian spices, like African nutmeg, Ethiopia pepper, Tropical clove, black pepper, alligator pepper are potent antioxidant source. Dietary phytochemicals and their functional roles in degenerative diseases. I will start with diabetes. Recently, medical personnel revealed that type 2 diabetes is killing more Nigerians than the dreaded HIV AIDS virus. Raising an alarm over a looming pandemic, which is also responsible for the increase in the number of Nigeria going blind and suffering from stroke and kidney disease. Inhibition of pancreatic alpha amylase and intestinal alpha glucosidase involve enzymes involved in the digestion of starch and absorption of glucose is involved in the control of hyperglycemia. Inhibition of this enzyme normally results in slow and prolonged release of glucose into circulation, thus preventing sudden hyperglycemia after the consumption of a meal. Mr. Vice Chancellor Sir, within the last decade, my research group has investigated several tropical vegetables, fruits, and legumes. These have visited their anti-diabetic potentials. Time will not permit me to speak on all of these investigations. However, I will highlight some of the more interesting discoveries. One of our studies revealed that unripe plantain diet, amala, and bolly, can cause a significant reduction in blood glucose 
and inhibited our families and glucosidase activity with a corresponding improvement in the plasma antioxidant status of diabetic rats after just 14 days of treatment. In a later study by our group, we recorded reduced blood glucose, alpha amylase, and intestinal alpha glucose activity, but increased antioxidant status in diabetic rat fed fermented soya beans. Similar findings were recorded with fermented Barbara granite and glucose beans. In another study, Dietary supplementation with clove but caused a significant reduction in the intestinal alpha glucosidase and lower blood glucose level in diabetic crust. Several food and food products with these enzyme inhibitory properties were discovered in our laboratories. These include leaf vegetables, citrus pea, unripe pepper essential oil from spices and cocoa beans, hypertension and cardiovascular complications. One of the major risks of diabetes mellitus is hypertension, as persistent hyperglycemia may trigger hypertension and other con cardiovascular complications, with global epidemics status affecting 50 to 20% of all adult population. This disease is defined as the persistent increase in blood pressure exceeding 140 per 90 millimeter of mercury. The renin adiotensis system is one of the main targets for the regulation of blood pressure. Its inhibition at three possible levels Agrotensin 1 converting enzyme, AC, upstream renin activity, or downstream agrotensin receptor, is the pharmacological basis for some commonly used antihypertensive drug. However, our study revealed that dietary supplementation of either ginger or turmeric caused a significant re reduction in the systolic blood pressure as well as serum and kidney ACE activity. To this end and over the years, my research group has screened many plant food with acclaimed anti properties, and several ACE inhibitors have been discovered in many of them. These include phenolic extract from orange peas, grapefruit peas, shaddock peas, bitter leaf, jute leaf, underutilized legume, unripe plantain, garlic, soya bean, ginger, and essential oil of black pepper. Neurodegenerative disease. Azimia disease is the most common form of age-related dementia and is characterized by progressive and is insidious neurodegeneration of central nervous system that eventually leads to a gradual decline of cognitive function and dementia. High levels of metals such as copper, iron, zinc, manganese, aluminum, and mercury have been implicated in many brain cancer and other neurodegenerative diseases such as Parkinson and multiple sclerosis. Mr. Vice Chancellor. I wish to draw the attention of this distinguished audience to the story of Obotoyo, locally manufactured salt used as salt replacement by hypertensive patient in the southwestern Nigeria. Our investigation of this salt, we started with the aim of assessing their role as anti-hypertension agent, revealed that the salt substitute are neurotoxic. They cause significant increase in the both acetylcholinesterase and butylcholinesterase activities and causes oxidative stress in the brain of rats. The neurotoxic effect of the salt were attributed to the presence of some toxic heavy metals. 
In a later study, we discovered that battery leachate obtained from Elewiedo battery recycling site and the well water at the neighborhood in Ibadan contains heavy metal and could cause neurological defect by increasing oxidative stress, acetylcholinesterase activity, and butylcholinesterase activities in the brain. However, supplementation of raw diet with pepper, anato seed extract, yellow dye from the root of brimstone tree, red dye from sorghum stem, can reduce oxidative stress in the brain. Other food and food products that can prevent oxidative stress in the brain have been added, identified in a, a laboratory. This include green tea and sour tea, turmeric and ginger, as well as spices. Although the etiology of azemia is not fully understood yet. Boosting the acetylcholine content at the cholinergic nerve ending has been proposed as a therapeutic approach to the management of the disease. However, this, ap this approach is achieved by the inhibition of acetylcholine degrading enzyme such as acetylcholinesterase and butylcholinesterase at the synaptic cleft in a number of plants in a number of plant foods such as ginger and turmeric infertility and erectile dysfunction in order to evaluate some of the remote causes of male infertility we examine the effect of battery leachate from municipal battery recycling sites on marker of male fertility in experimental animals. Exposure to this leachate induced lipid peroxidation, impaired cell membrane, reduced sperm membrane fluidity, caused injury to the spermatozoa in the testes of male rat. Also, sub chronic exposure to the leachate affect reproductive function by depleting serum hormones levels such as luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, and testosterone. One not leave is one of the several medicinal plants used in folklore as male fertility enhancer. Treatment of adult male rat with the extracts for 21 days, prevent auditive stress in the reproductive system, accessory gland, and the extract also prevented ethanol-induced toxicity in reproductive system in rats. Erectile dysfunction is prevalent in over 150 million men in the world. It has been prior to affect about 50 million men by 2025. Now my erectile function is stimulated through a series of actions involving the realization of cavernosal arteries and sinuses, which leads to increase in blood flow to the penis. Recent report from our research group showed that directly dietary supplementation with tiger nut and walnut enhance sexual behavior altered hormonal action, increased antioxidant activities, and exerted aphrodisiac properties in rats. Kidney disease. Our earlier report showed that some substitute obotoyo contains some toxic heavy metals and causes liver damage. In a related study by our group, we found that the source of it can also cause oxidative stress and damage to the kidney. However, some of our findings reveal that 
dietary inclusion of ginger and turmeric can protect the kidney from detamensin induced nephrotoxicity. In a later study, dietary inclusion of red dye from Abiscus zabdarivacalis, I mean Zobo, and extract of sorghum straw prot protected the kidney against cisplatin induced nephrotoxicity and other stress in rat colon cancer. Colon cancer is a general term denoting various forms of malignant tumor whose cells grow and divide more rapidly than normal, invading surrounding tissues and generally spread to other sites. Mr. Vasilosa, our interest has been in, has been in colorectal cancer otherwise known as Bowe cancer, that is, cancer in the colon, which are part of the large intestine. In a study of colorectal cancer, we employ the tools of tissue culture, using three kinds of cells, which are at three different developmental stages of cancer. Kakotu cells, which are primary tumor cell lines. Lovo cells, which are metastasized, and lovo ADR cell, which are also metastatic cell, and are resistant to the drug dozorubicin. In the first instance, we tackled the issue of positive stress in cancer progression. This study revealed that the phenolic extract from citrus pre protect the membrane lipids of primary colonic tumor cells and the metastatic cell lines. A number of therapeutic interventions in the management of cancer have targeted the mechanism involved in the loss of apoptosis, angiogenesis, and metastasis. The apoptosis-inducing ability of some bioactive compounds have been linked to their inhibition of proteasome activity. Our study revealed that phenolic extract from citrus pea, orange, shaddock, and grapefruit inhibited proteasome activity in primary and metastatic colon cancer cell. The key class of enzyme involved in angiogenesis and metastasis is matrix metalloproteins, MMPs. MMP degrades cellular matrix component, thereby allowing cancer cells to invade blood and lymphatic cells and spread to other parts of the body. However, our study showed that phenolic extract from orange peas inhibited MMP activities in primary and metastatic colon cancer cell. Therefore, a combination of the high cell antioxidant activity, proteasum, and MMP ability of the phenolic extract from the piece used in our study is important in colon cancer management food drug interaction. Copious research findings have shown that food and food bioactive components could influence the pharmacological and therapeutic properties of drugs. In one of our in vitro studies, garlic acid, a phenolic acid abundantly found in many foods such as tea, fruits, vegetables and spices positively influence the anti-diabetic properties of acabos. Garlic acid, when combined with acabos at ratio 1 to 1, produce, produce no significant difference in alpha glucosidase inhibition compared to 100% acabos. This could be of therapeutic importance in producing similar therapeutic effects 
while possibly reducing the side effect associated with the use of acabos, such as diarrhea and flatulence. In another study, while investigating the potential use of African beige in the management of type 2 diabetes, we observe that the leaf extract as well as other properties and inhibited the activities of alpha amylase and alpha glucosidase activities in vitro. Uh, while a combination of the extract with acabos in equal proportion produced an additive effect on alpha amylase inhibition, but a synergistic effect on alpha glucosidase inhibition. Recent report from our group also revealed that combination of cucumin, the main phenolic compound in turmeric, with donepezi, a cholesterol inhibitor drug, improves learning and memory activity. In a related study, we reported that low caffeine consumption may improve the antioxidant properties of donepezi without having a significant influence on its anticholinesterase effect. Moderate to high caffeine consumption could also improve the antioxidant properties of donopersy, but reduces its anticholinesterase effect. Development of functional foods. Mr. Vajnosa, uh, we have generated a lot of data on the bioactive substance in a wide range of Nigerian foods and their physiological roles. Therefore, the knowledge and the skills acquired over the years have been translated into a wide range of functional food products, which in due course will be found in Nigerian market. Furthermore, we have developed some functional food products with excellent sensory properties as dietary intervention for the prevention and management of some of the diseases earlier highlighted. Sorrel drink, Moringa, Moringa and Sorrel blend beverages were especially developed for the prevention and management of diabetes and hypertension. Other products developed in our research group include anti-diabetic cookies and biscuit from Bambara granite, Asha, and Pigeon Pea, respectively. These products have displayed excellent anti-hyperglycemic potential in diabetic rat and certified diabetic patients during clinical trial. Bread with anti-diabetic properties was also produced from unripe plantain, vitamin A enriched cassava, and Bambara granite, respectively. We have also produced fermented legume condiment with anti-diabetic properties from soya bean, locust bean, and Bambara granite. Natural food colorant from sorghum straw and a biscuit of Sabdariva calis for the management of kidney disease have also been developed. Essential oils from citrus pea and spices have, been uh, have also been produced, and this oil can be beneficial in both cosmetic and food industry. However, all these products are awaiting full commercialization. Concluding remark. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I have taught at all levels of education. I have successfully supervised over 50 MTech candidates and 13 PhD holders <laughs> who are presently occupying academic positions in their various universities, including our own very university, FUTA, and may in due course become professors. Other MSc and PhD students are at various stages of their research work with high sense of humility. I wish to leave this distinguished audience to assess the extent to which I have contributed to human capital development in Nigeria. 
I have spent more than 90% of my life activities since 1997 when I assumed duty in Futa, teaching and supervising undergraduate and postgraduate students, and conducting research in biochemistry. I have to date published over 250 articles. most of which are EI impact journals across the globe, chapters in referred books, reviewed a number of manuscripts in World Index Journal, and won several grants and academic awards. I have presented seminars in different universities across the globe and several papers at conferences. These have culminated into my high academic record as two-time winner of the Award of Best Researcher of the Year in our great institution. A scientist with the highest number of publications and citations in Scopus, Thompson Ruther ISI, PubMed, and Google Scholar in Futa as of today. In the last Google Scholar ranking of Nigerian scientists, it is worthy of note that I was among the top 10 scientists in Nigeria. My research findings have made original contribution to existing knowledge, for which reprints of my work are from time to time sought for worldwide. I have served in and outside the university in various committees I am presently serving as the head of the biochemistry department. I have attracted a lot of research grants to this university, through which I was able to establish the first and only research laboratory in Nigeria on functional food and nutraceuticals. <laughs> this laboratory has continued to attract researchers from all over the country. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Back in 400 BC, the Greek physician Apocrites said, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food. Today, good nutrition is more important than ever. At least four of the ten leading causes of death, heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, are directly related to the way we eat. Therefore, Eat functional food to stay healthy and live long. Eat more vegetable and fruit and avoid junk food. <laughs> Recommendation. It is no more news that diabetes is killing more Nigerians than the dreaded HIV virus. Cardiovascular disease, infertility, and others are, incre are increasing at alarming rate. Therefore, I recommend the following as specified. Public. The populace should avoid the consumption of junk food, that is, food rich in refined sugar, fat, but low in dietary fiber. Number two. Since the body internal production of antioxidants is not sufficient to combat the excessive production of ROS. Thus, it becomes imperative to eat food rich in antioxidant and dietary polyphenol. As a general rule, I recommend re regular medical checkup to ascertain our health status. Regular physical exercise cannot be overemphasized. All should maintain a healthy weight, avoid being obese. Try to keep your body mass index within 20 to 25. Since most people in this hall are adults, I wish to recommend national guidelines for adults. Include plenty of complex carbohydrates, for example, oatmeal bread, whole grain rice. 
include five servings of fresh fruit and vegetable per day. Aim for diet low in salt, saturated fat, refined carbohydrate, and sugar. Include good fat like olive oil and oily fish. Include protein salts like lean meat to the university. A compulsory and regular medical checkup should be enforced on both staff and students. The university should embrace a good dietary pattern of serving medicinal stroke healthy food in all university meetings and functions. Cartoons and eateries on campus should avoid the sales of junk food. Rather, they should be encouraged to sell medicinal stroke healthy food. Regular and compulsory monthly exercise should be introduced. Futa bakery should go beyond producing conventional bread. Rather, special bread for people battling with diseases such as diabetes, hypertension, and young disease should be introduced. Production of fruta fruit juice should be introduced. In the light of this, medicinal drinks can be produced from some natural source. And the university should open some designated marketing outlets in and within the state for the marketing of special product from Futa. <laughs> Federal government. Federal government should provide funds for research in functional food and nutraceuticals. This will enable scientists to generate data on local foods with medicinal potential. Nutritional centers should be established in each of the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria where people can visit for nutritional stroke dietary consultation. An Institute of Functional Food and Toxica should be established. We are experts in food, nutrition, dietetics, and toxicology may be engaged to run short-term intensive courses for medical doctors, nurses, and other health professionals. Medicinal food through plant farming should be encouraged to complement food and cash crop farming, and public enlightenment campaign through print and electronic media should be on the importance of dietary pattern on good health. Acknowledgement. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whichever way, but whatever you do, you have to keep moving, said Martin Luther King Jr. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my, my moving forward was made difficult by some, while it was made easy by others. Which, whichever way, both parties have made me who I am today. Cutting Mehmet Murat Inda. Give your thanks to the needle that stuck in your finger, to a wooden beam that eats your head, to a bee that stung you on your hand because they taught you something. My special gratitude goes to all my mentors, starting from my supervisors, Professor J.O. Adele, hey, Akidansi. A. O. Shodi and Dr. Mrs. M. M. Berigin for the thorough training, counsel, guidance, support, and encouragement. I appreciate my academic grandfather, Professor S. R. Adeusi, and my other academic parents, Reverend Kanoji Olugasa, my principal at Oyeme Grammar School, Akure, Professors M. A. Akonji, F. A. Akinosoye, F. C. Adetuyi, V. A. Aleto. M.A.K. Smith, and S.K. Layokun of Blessed Memories. My collaborators and associates, Professors M.A. Ashamo, 
M. Kiola Dumoye, M. A. Azeke, E. O. Farombi, O. C. Adebaoye, O. Akinloye, J. O. Agbede, S. Iwana, Aderoju Oshawale of Blessed Memory, Drs. B. C. Alushinyan, A. O. Adaramoye, and Amos Abolaji. I also acknowledge my international collaborators for inviting me to conduct research in their laboratories and for their wonderful support, namely Professor J.B.T. Rocha of the Biochemical Toxicology Program, Federal University of Santa Maria, Brazil, Professor Thomas Ellen of the Institute of Food Chemistry, Technical University of Dres Technical University Dresden, Germany, Professor Sabina Passamonti, of the Department of Life Science, University of Trieste, Italy, Professor Zunji Ko of the Institute of Nutritional Studies, Shanghai, China, and Professor Tiziana Bacchetti, Polytechnic University of Mackay, Ancona, Italy. I am very grateful for the research grant that I have enjoyed from the Federal University of Technology at Kure, African Academy of Science, Nairobi, Kenya, International, International Foundation of Sci for Science, Stockholm, Sweden, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Ted Fund Nigeria, Alessandra von Umbert Foundation, Germany, the World Academy of Science, Italy. I also give special kudos to the organization whose travel grant I benefited from. International Center for Theoretical Physics, Italy, International Atomic Energy Agency, Vienna, Austria, Alessandra von Umbert Foundation, Germany, the World Academy of Science, Chinese Academy of Science, and National Council of Technology and Scientific Development, Brazil. I am thankful to my postgraduate student, past and present, who worked so hard with me during the course of some studies presented here today. I have trained them to be diligent, focused, and committed to research. They are indeed examples and good representatives of mentoring. I salute the diligence of all my research colleagues and collaborators and students. I cannot but mention the effort of the three A's, Drs. Adida Yade Milui, Adeni Yade Fega, and Ayokunli Adomesun, the academic tripod on which I stand. I cannot forget those precious time we spent brainstorming on research ideas, and the output of such academic diligence are obvious and on record. I lay it to art to appreciate all the past and present Futa Vice Chancellor, Professor T. I. Francis of Blessed Memory, A. Limbadi of Blessed Memory, L. B. Kolawale, E. A. Adeyemi, Aru E. Gushisi of Blessed Memory, P. O. Adetui, A. M. Balogo, and Professor A. G. Deramola, the present Vice Chancellor. Dean School of Science, Professor A. O. Shodi, F. C. Adetui, K. O. Imoroti of Blessed Memory, C. O. Adedire, I. F. Wakbe, and O. K. Koriko. Academic and non academic staffs of Biochemistry Department. I appreciate the spiritual support of my church, Deeper Life Bible Church, and the prayers of my pastors and other men of God that God has brought my way in my sojourn through life is greatly acknowledged. I am thankful, thankful to my late father, Chief Yaya Obo, for his investment in my education and enormous support while he was here. I am highly indebted to my mother, Mrs. Lametobo, for her motherly affection, care, love, concern, and constant prayer. Indeed, Orishabi Yakosi, I am also grateful to my siblings for their constant support. Furthermore, the support and constant prayers of my wonderful in-laws, very reverend, and Mrs. M.B. Ajayi is greatly acknowledged. The affections of my wife's sibling is well appreciated. 
I am indebted and mostly appreciate the love and sacrifice of my wife. Tosin Obu, children, Folu, Funto, and Funwo. I can say it again and again that I made the right choice when I chose you as a life partner. Finally, I am internally grateful to the Almighty God, who is the giver of all wisdom and knowledge. Thank you. Please be seated. That lecture was given by Futas Export to the scientific world. He is our product in whom we are well pleased. Another round of applause. Congratulations for a job well done. We want to acknowledge the presence of the following people who have come to grace this inaugural lecture. I'd like to start from my predecessor in office, Professor Adebisi Balogun, former Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Professor Valentine Aleto, former Vice Chancellor, Elizabeth University. Professor Thomas Sofuya, former Vice Chancellor of Wellspring University. <laughs> Professor Wilson Tolabadejo, former Vice Chancellor of Wesley University. <laughs> is that saying that Gani Obo will soon be a Vice Chancellor too? <laughs> With the area of former Vice Chancellors that are seated here. Professor Charles Sawa, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> University of Ibadan. Professor Adewusi Obafemi Awolo, the grandfather. Mm -hmm. I happened to work with Professor Adewusi during my undergraduate too, in chemistry department. <laughs> Professor H. A. Oboli Dean, School of Basic Medical Sciences, University of Benin. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Professor Roti Mialuko, University of Manitoba, Winnipeg, Canada. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Dr. Mrs. A. O. Ido, Mountain Top University, Ogun State. Thank you for coming. Dr. Femi Ayade, Subdean, Redeemers University, thank you for coming. <laughs> Professor E.O. Farumbi, Head, Department of Biochemistry, University of Ibadan. <laughs> Professor Ross Shetinga, University of Santa Maria, Brazil, thank you for coming. <laughs> Professor B.T. Darosha, UFSM Santa Maria, thank you for coming. <laughs> Dr. Shegun Oyemuiwa OAU Ife, thank you for coming. <laughs> Dr. Olawa Leo Titoju, Federal University Wukari, all the way, thank you for coming. <laughs> now to some friends of the university who are here present. Chief Son Yao Yin Son, our own dear. Thank you for coming, sir. 
Dr. Abitoye, former Minister for Education. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Prince Adebuli Adeshida, former University Librarian. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Dr. Lumise, University of Benin. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Chief Oluogunjebi, representing the Oloba of Abali. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and to the family members. I'd like to recognize the presence of Mrs. Tosin Obo, the better half of the lecturer. Thank you for adding value to his life. Mrs. M Ms. Mofolu Asho Obo, daughter, congratulations. Master Mofolu Ato Obo, son. Then, Malam Ismail Obo, brother, thank you for coming. <laughs> Dr. Ransom Obo, you're welcome. <laughs> brother, Mrs. Alima Ismaila Obo, sister-in-law. <laughs> Mrs. Yinka Digwe, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mrs. Shalom Obo. That should be a miss, not Mrs. Mrs. Olu Dobi, sister-in-law. And last but not the least, Dr. Mrs. Taiwa Ajayi, sister-in-law. We want to thank all of you for coming. And we say the PRO will give you the next announcement. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm told and I very believed that adequate provisions have been made and I'm told that all students should proceed after the end of the program to the Hilltop Auditorium where they will be adequately taken care of. Not now, please. After the program. <laughs> Great Futerians. Great Futerians, great Futerians, other guests. Other guests should wait here and they will also be taken care of. At this point, I'd like all of us to stand for the FUTA as well as the national anthems of Nigeria.
we will remain standing for the procession of the Vice Chancellor to leave the auditorium. We shall remain standing, please. All students should leave the auditorium for the hilltop auditorium.